it might soon be a permanent game over for coral reefs. Warming waters are hurting the world's coral reefs almost five times more than they did 30 years ago. Scientists looked at bleaching data in 100 coral reefs. They found that the frequency of bleaching from warmer waters increased fivefold from once every few decades to once every six years. Bleaching occurs when the reef reacts to stressful changes in temperature, light, nutrients, and other conditions. This makes the reef eject the symbiotic algae in their tissue and turn pale white. Corals can survive and even recover, but continued bleaching eventually leads to death. According to the National Ocean Service, coral reefs are considered sessile animals, meaning they're fixed to one place. The World Wildlife Fund says they provide almost 30 billion U.S. dollars in goods and services every year. They're also important for tourism, coast protection against heavy storms, typhoons, and even tsunamis. Where waters run deep. Coral bleaching is killing the Great Barrier Reef. Scientists are warning that vast swaths of Australia's stunningly beautiful Great Barrier Reef may never recover from repeated coral bleaching. The Great Barrier Reef is 2,300 kilometers long and covers an area of more than 344,000 square kilometers. This is similar to the size of Japan. However, studies suggest the reef is under threat from repeated bleaching of its corals caused by rising sea temperatures. Corals are marine animals that live in compact colonies of tiny, identical individual polyps. Coral polyps produce a limestone skeleton. Layering that takes place over hundreds of years by millions of polyps creates a scaffolding, better known as a reef. Most corals get their food from the microscopic algae that live inside their tissue. The algae convert energy from the sun into food, mostly in the form of sugar. It is the algae that provide coral reefs with their vibrant color. Coral bleaching mainly occurs when a rise in sea temperatures causes the algae to produce toxins. In self-defense, the corals then expel the algae, which exposes their limestone skeleton. Corals can recover if there's a subsequent drop in water temperatures, but without the algae, they risk starving to death. Scientists have warned for decades that burning fossil fuels releases greenhouse gases that warm the oceans and put coral at risk. In turn, that jeopardizes the marine ecosystem, including fish that rely on the reefs to protect them from predators. This could in turn spark a food shortage because hundreds of millions of people worldwide rely on reef fish as their primary source of protein. In order to reduce ocean temperatures and give bleached reefs a chance to recover, greenhouse gas emissions must be reduced. Greenhouse gas emissions can be cut by reducing meat consumption and using solar and electric energy instead of fossil fuels. So if we want future generations to enjoy the beauty of the Great Barrier Reef, it seems it really is up to us. Scientists find O-Town. Fancy a trip to Octopus Town, Australia? Then you could be in luck. The Octopus Tetricus, more commonly known as the Gloomy Octopus, is widely thought to be antisocial. This thinking may soon change. New research has found a site occupied by 15 of the octopuses close to Jarvis Bay on Australia's east coast. Scientists observed complex social behavior in the creatures, including mating, mate defense, as well as eviction from the site and exclusion of some from the group. The study provides scientists with a deeper understanding of one of nature's most difficult to study creatures. Pretty soon, some sharks will have a Napoleon complex. Damn it, climate change! Climate change may actually be altering the size of the planet's fish. A recent study published in the journal Global Change Biology suggests that rising temperatures in oceans might be shrinking fish. Warmer waters mean less oxygen, something fish need to grow into adulthood. Fish use their gills to breathe underwater. From an evolutionary perspective, less oxygen would see gills adapting to warmer waters by becoming smaller. Researchers found that warming oceans may cause fish such as tuna and trout to shrink by around 30 and 8 percent, respectively. They estimate that worldwide, this trend could reduce the amount of fish that can be caught for food by 30 percent. But hey, at least on the positive side, you might soon be able to put a pet shark in a fish bowl. Study says ocean farming could provide all the seafood we need. New research suggests that ocean farming could be enough to fill much of the global demand for seafood. Researchers suggest a farm area the size of Lake Michigan could satisfy the world's current demand for seafood. 
Their study says that an ocean area of 11.4 million square kilometers could satisfy fishing demands, while 1.4 square million kilometers would be needed for bivalve seafood, such as oysters. However, experts commenting on the study say that while space isn't a limitation for the expansion of ocean farming, costs for operation, production, and transportation could be. Climate change and how humans interact with large-scale ocean farms are another factor that could impact the feasibility of relying on ocean farming.